Hey, Walter Sorrells back with more tips for the knife maker. Today, we're going to make some tool handles. There are a number of metalworking and carpentry tools that are typically sold without a tool handle. Now, of course, there are commercially available handles that will go on those. We're talking about files, rasps, uh, and maybe even some more obscure things like floats, but also even chisels. Um, and uh, you can make some of these your, yourself, uh, especially some of the more obscure ones that are difficult to find. You might want to for a specific project or whatever. So we're going to show you how to make a tool handle that you can go ahead and put on your own tools. I'll begin by mounting a piece of wood on the spur drive of my lathe. In this video, I'll use a number of different woods, including Bocote, Walnut, Ziracote, and Bubinga. Any reasonably hard wood will make a good tool handle, but closer grained, smoother woods are less likely to leave splinters in your hands. After turning the square to a round, I'll begin in earnest by marking the ends of the handles as well as the spot where the ferrule will be mounted. I'll then use the parting tool to chew my way down to the target depth. Here I'm parting into a hard, grabby wood, so I'm working my way down pretty gingerly. If you get too slap happy with a parting tool, it can gouge out a nice chunk of shrapnel. Also, I don't want to overshoot. If you go too far, the ferrule will be loose, and I don't want that. I'd rather be a hair oversized and have to take off a little extra by hand than go too deep. I'm using 5 8 inch brass tube for the ferrules, so I've set my calipers for that dimension. After getting my limits set, I'll hog out some more material with the big gouge, then turn to smaller gouges to turn the head of the handle. I'll dragoon a skew into service to even things out, then some sandpaper. I'm going up to about 600 grit on the oily exotics, whereas I'll stop at 320 on the walnut, which is a little softer. If you feel the urge, you can go ahead and lay on your finish while it's on the lathe. With woods like Ziracote, I'll just put on furniture wax and buff them out. The walnut, on the other hand, will get an oil finish, but I'll put that on later. Next, I cut the ends off on the bandsaw then smooth the ends on my grinder. Frankly, I was a little sloppy here, but these are just tools for myself, so I'm not really going nuts aiming for perfection. If you want that dome to be really beautiful looking, you just have to work it by hand a little bit. Next, I drilled a hole appropriate to whatever tool I intended to install in the handle. Since I did several of them, the holes are different sizes. Incidentally, there's a good argument for chucking up the blank when you first turn it down from the square, drilling the hole, out of the tail stock and then reinstalling it on the spur and turning it to final dimension but it's a little bit of a pain in the neck to go back and forth and back and forth so I just drilled the holes at the end the problem with that of course is that it's a lot harder to drill them perfectly concentrically next I'll secure the ferrules using epoxy some people will knock a little divot in the side to form a sort of detent that locks the ferrule in and other people run pins through them this makes good sense for tools like chisels that have a slip fit into the handle, but for tools like files which have tapered tangs, this seems to me unnecessary. 
Pressure from the tang of the tool will radiate outward as it's jammed into the handle, creating plenty of force to keep the ferrule tight and in place over time. I cut the ferrules oversized, leaving them proud of the surface, so after the epoxy is set, I'll grind off the excess tube, chamfer the end a little for comfort, then polish up the brass. Here's an unusual woodworking tool called a float installed in the Xeracote handle. It's a tool that's similar to a file which is intended for making planes, but can be useful in cutting any kind of precision joints like mortises and tenons, certain kinds of dovetails and so on. If you're interested in seeing how I made it, I've got a link here to a video on the subject. Here I'm laying a little tongue oil on the walnut. And here are some tools in their completed state. Obviously to do this project you need a lathe, a fairly large and expensive tool which some folks don't have. What if you don't have a lathe? Well, in an upcoming video I'll show you how you can do a similar handle using a cheap but effective hand tool, the spoke shave. Thanks for watching guys. If you feel like you got something out of this video, don't forget to subscribe. Also, click on the link to Patreon for a great way to give back to the channel. Plus, check me out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Links in the description. If you want something sharp and pointy, maybe a gift for yourself or one of the cooler people in your life, check out my Tactics Armory website and pick up one of our tactical or outdoor knives. And finally, if you want to learn to make hamons or Japanese swords, check out waltersorrelsblades.com where you can find videos about how I make hamons as well as forging, mounting, polishing, and fittings for Japanese swords. Thanks and see you soon!